Hello and welcome to a special. We drove from Germany to Cape Town, 55,000 kilometers in 14 months. And this is the review of our room tour, of our build, of our car. If you missed out on our travel episodes, go to our channel and check them out. But today is the car, our main character. We just prepared the car for shipping and we thought it's a good time to do a review of our setup, tell you what is working well, what's not so great and what we would change in the future if we do another build. We have a TD5 engine, the engine performs well, we drove so far in this trip 55,000 kilometers. We didn't have any problems with the engine, no overheat, nothing. Uh, we are still not leaking oil. So engine is great and we are really happy with it. One thing we learned in Africa, especially going to national parks and uh, driving off-road, you really need a seat net to protect your radiators. Seats and seats and seats. We managed to get one in Namibia but it was a bit too late, we had to clean out the radiator two or three times. One of the few things we broke is the glass of the Cyclone. It was already pretty old and it's not enough UV stabilized. Luckily we found a new glass but it's ruinously expensive. It's a, I don't know, it's just a piece of plastic and it costs almost 100 euros. That's really something that shouldn't be that way. Uh, in the first place, it should be UV stabilized. With our tire choice, the BF Goodrich All Terrains KO2s, we are really, really happy. We have now roughly 75,000 kilometers on the tires. They show quite some wear due to the rough terrain we were driving on including volcanoes, um, coral and a lot of dirt tracks but yeah overall I have to say the tires are really good we would choose them again uh, also the tire size we are happy with um, the only place where the tires struggle a little bit is in the mud but therefore you have the mud terrains in those 55,000 kilometers we had two punctures we could fix with uh, a tire fixing kit but other than that uh, they were great. If you remember the last video we showed our old shower uh, right after the video the shower exploded as we pressurized it but we really love the setup that's why we went out in Saudi and built a new one. One thing you really need to take care of is that you attach those lids. I personally like to lose those lids. When we were just taking some water from the mosque, I put the lid of the shower somewhere, I think on top of the defender, and we drove off. I think we had to shower three weeks or four weeks until I lost the lid and we couldn't use it for several months until we found a solution with like a flexible lid because this system is a Saudi system and we could not find in any country, even in Jordan, which is bordering Saudi, we could not find a lid that was fitting to this shower, to this thread. So we are still with the flexible one. We cannot pressurize it, but it still works great. With the compressor, it's the, the cheap Britpart compressor. We are still happy. A lot of people told us it will break yadi 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 um, it's 50 bucks it works great it has a heat protection so we were for a short moment scared in Saudi that um, it broke the compressor just stopped working and it's super hot guys okay, checking the fuse but after like cooling down for 20 minutes it will just start again so we learned that and yeah, it fills the tires, it's a bit slow, 
So, but for 50 bucks, what do you want to say? We would really recommend to get a rubbish bag like that. There are several ones on the market. We are pretty happy with this one. Um, the only thing, especially with the one from Nakatanenga, they should put another strap inside that holds the bag up to the tire. We have like that one, um, but just do another clip to it uh, so it doesn't slide down because it doesn't matter how hard you fix it to the tire it always goes down and then it hangs down here uh, it's not nice so just nakatanenga just put another strap there and uh, hold it up somebody tried to steal the bag but those straps are so heavy duty that they failed to cut it with the knife and it was pretty tough to sew it but yeah we fixed it, it still works. One thing we are struggling a little bit with is the original spare wheel carrier that basically holds the wheel. Um, it got broken in Saudi because a car hit us from the back. Luckily we have the x spare wheel carrier that is really, really heavy duty and that basically saved our back door. But um, the, the wheel holder of the spare wheel carrier which is really thin metal we had to get that welded in namibia the crash in combination with corrugations is just a, a killer and uh, it didn't survive one thing corrugations kill everything so another thing where we had problems with corrugations is those sand pots they're pretty heavy so they pull a lot up here and up here and this sheet is only glued to the original side of the car where normally the window is and due to the corrugations it just rattled loose and uh, it cracked up here so we put two rivets on each side and now it's secure so far but yeah that's something I would do different in the future just Put a small bracket behind or so from the inside that holds the sand ports in place. To the electrical system it works flawless. We have always um, full batteries only like if we work eight nine hours at the laptop and it's cloudy there's no sun then we would need to start the engine to recharge the batteries Normally we do that when the battery monitor tells us we are at 60%, 70%. We normally don't go below that. And on a normal day where we have solar, even if we work at the laptop, we never drop below 90%. And that is thanks to the 200 watt of solar and thanks to the two 80 amp hour batteries that are constantly connected. I'm not a friend of battery separation relays because you have one battery that works a lot and you have one battery that doesn't do anything and if you put them together and you have like a little bit an eye or you have a feeling of how much electricity you use that's enough we had never a situation where we couldn't start the engine and so on so I would highly recommend just connect your two batteries and live off that a little extra electricity that you have your fridge will never stop and your batteries are not aging so fast as they would if you have one uh, leisure battery and one starting battery and we are really happy with the components of Wiktron we have a really small inverter for the laptops and the solar charger including the smart battery sensor or smart battery shunt and they're working flawless like nothing broke everything is super reliable even at high temperatures we can use the inverter so really thumbs up for uh, the quality of Victron. regarding our solar setup we changed one thing just within the last days here in cape town we had victitech built a slide out system so we can have both solar panels on top of each other normally if we frequently drive and if we have the fridge only and charge phones cameras and so on 100 watts are almost enough but if we edit and make videos we need the 200 watts 
So therefore, we put the two solar panels on top of each other. That has the really big upside that I can access the surfboards at any time. In the system that we had before, we strapped one solar panel to the surfboards and I had to take it down every time I wanted to go surfing. And if you see waves and you want to go out there and then you have to like 40 minutes take down surfboards and assemble them so on the waves are gone. So that was a bummer. That's why we had that system built and it's great to take them out. You just slide it out and it stays in place and to put them in pretty easy and we still have on top the original solar mount that we had so we can put the upper solar panel towards the sun in all four directions that stayed the same we just slide the the second solar panel below we are still really really happy with the pop top from X Vision X um, after five years now we had to replace the gas struts like the big one we couldn't find yet but we will uh, bring that from Germany and um, also the small ones got replaced so um, we're using the pop top since a year every day and we have it as I said five years so we opened and closed it quite a few times and we are carrying a pretty heavy roof load therefore um, the performance is really great we have no problems with the canvas no cracks no rips nothing it's still waterproof so the interior works great we are really happy with the setup that we choose having the sofa having the table we use it quite a lot we actually eat most of the time inside we are too lazy to put the chairs out and like with having animals around or with uh, colder nights and so on. It's nice to be able to sit inside if it rains and um, just chill inside, eat inside. So um, happy with the setup. One thing we would change, which I suffer quite a lot, is it's not really comfortable to sit in the bench due to the fact that it's just like 90 degrees. I don't have a solution for it. Probably make that a little bit wider and uh, make the seating a little bit inclinated as well as giving the, the back a little inclination so you can sit nicer. So it's a bit more like a sofa. That's something I would change in a future build. But that's really comfort and convenience, uh, nothing else. It works great. Everything stayed in place, even with corrugations, with heavy off-road. It, it's really stable. Another thing at this interior especially is weight distribution. So due to the big furniture here and the small furniture on this side, even if we have the cooler on the right side, but there's the water tank, there's um, clothes, there's a lot of small things, dishes and so on. So we combine quite a bit of weight here and you can see the car is always a little bit tilted to the left side. That's something um, I want to address in the future. Maybe take the water tank out of the car and put it underneath, but it adds complexity. You need a tank that's either freeze resistant or has a heating system that doesn't freeze in colder temperatures. Therefore, we didn't do it in the beginning, but in the future, weight is definitely something I would like to change in this setup. One thing we are a bit struggling with is the lifesaver. It tends to leak inside the car, which yeah, is really not the best thing. We are in contact with Lifesaver, the company. We are talking to them on almost a weekly basis. 
the only solution they could come up with is to send us again a new tab that didn't change anything in the first place. We're already at the second tab and it's a hassle to get it from the UK. So not so happy about that. We still love the system of the Lifesaver. It's maintenance free. The filter life is really long and um, it doesn't need a high pressure pump so on. But um, the leakage of the Lifesaver itself is a big problem for us because we have it inside the car. Talking about leaks, yes, we developed some water leaks at the car, like at both corners in the back. There's a little bit of water coming in and in the front, but yeah, it's still a defender. It saw a lot of rough roads in the last year, in the last 55,000 kilometers. So I think it's kind of normal that water comes in, dust comes in, but yeah, it's a defender. We love it. Regarding mosquitoes, especially in East Africa, Central Africa, where there's a high malaria risk, we added a mosquito net. It's basically a full tent up here pack the whole mattress into it and at night we also ran one of those mosquito plugs with the inverter which both in combination work really great we didn't have any mosquito bites during the night so we would highly recommend especially to get one of those that kills all the mosquitoes in the car um, helped us a lot in general, we are really happy with the Defender, with the performance of the car. Uh, we had one major issue here in Southern Africa when we blew a prop shaft in the front, but we could just remove it and keep on driving. I would not count that as a real breakdown. So we can say we drove 50,000 kilometers from Mannheim to Cape Town without any breakdown in a Land Rover Defender that's 24 years old.